our Swedish adventure began on a cloudy August morning at Manchester Airport. Ten hours later, following a mix-up with the connections at Stockholm, we finally arrived at the port of Amir on Sweden's northeast coast. It was dark by the time we arrived at Lapla fishing camp, where we found everything we would need from comfortable self-catering accommodation to the option of hiring guides, boats and fish finders. The camp overlooks a large lake called Langvatnet, although we wouldn't be fishing there. With the boats loaded, we're ready to set off for our first day of Swedish fishing. But first of all, we called in at the tackle shop in the local town of Storaman. summer it's uh, no nights in here so kids are playing all the night outside really <laughs> god is there a good place to come for us to eat one day mm. for a restaurant uh, or a pub yeah it is one restaurant in the hotel here which one is pretty good right Half an hour up the road, we turned off onto a gravel track through the forest. This is part of the Umeåven River, which opens into a series of huge lakes before flowing into the Baltic Sea at the port of Amir. Fish finders showing very little evidence of activity. So if Aldous decide we should motor upriver to fish on the boundary of a fish farm.
At least a couple of red-throated divers were working the river, although they rarely came anywhere near the boat. If Elders assured us that this is usually a consistent spot for Arctic char, but unfortunately not many of them were in evidence on this occasion. Out of the blue, Martin found himself into a decent fish. Unfortunately, Martin's char was a one-off, so we headed back to camp wondering what the following day would bring. Madge is a huge lake which is renowned for its stock of arctic char and whitefish. The fish soon begin to come, mostly small arctic char with a few bigger ones in the two to three pound range and an occasional whitefish. Yeah, oh, that's uh, probably the smallest char in the history of mankind isn't it? Well thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see the maggot? Yeah. It's been had. I was delighted to chip in with my first ever whitefish, but very soon afterwards Roland was into a much bigger one. Hell. At an ounce short of four pounds it was one of the highlights of the holiday, although Avelda seemed unimpressed and assured us that they grow much bigger. Red-throated divers were present again. And although they were often barely visible, their loud, haunting calls carried long distances across the water. Oh! <laughs> Yo! 
any better, could you? Is that going to the pot? I think we've got too many for the pot already, personally, but uh, it's yes. up to you. Problem is my camera isn't wide enough, wide angle enough to take me in. Yeah, well, bit, a bit of you, but not all of you. Another white fish. <laughs> Fantastic. I did, I, mine was much smaller than that. <laughs> oh, you wake up. Our second day proved to be much more successful than the first. And we all caught the char and the whitefish we'd been hoping for. On our third day we headed to a couple of hydroelectric channels where grayling would be the main target species. The Veldus did it the Swedish way and caught them on spinners. Martin, on the other hand, was in his element fishing a worm beneath a big loafer float. On the wooded banks there was evidence that a moose had recently passed this way. Most of the grayling were small but before long Martin found himself into a much bigger one. So instead of trotting I thought why not put a little shot on you know and bounce it round. Yep. This is a sort of second or third go with it. There seem to be more grayling up where, near the, the top end, but there might be bigger ones further down. You know, the second channel produced only a solitary small perch for Martin, so he didn't stay there long. Lunch was taken on the banks of Stencil Dammon, a large lake which was mostly shallow and rocky. After lunch we headed out on the boats for a couple of hours fishing in deteriorating weather, but only a few perch were added to the tally. However, we did see some interesting bird life, in the form of three cranes which flew over, and some parties of velvet scoters. Back at camp, a Veldus appeared at the door with the smoked fish which we'd caught yesterday, and the char in particular were delicious. It's the fourth day of the holiday and we're back at Melgomadge, hoping for a repeat of the success which we had enjoyed 48 hours previously.
a specimen. <laughs> I'm now, I'm now officially catching embryos. On several occasions during the week we caught sight of eagles, which we believe were golden eagles as they're known to inhabit the lowland boreal forests in this part of the world. By close of play it was raining, but we departed with a box of fish for Avelda's to smoke. The favoured Swedish tactic is to use these tiny jigs called pimples, which are typically baited with worms or maggots. The bait is sold in small plastic tubs, which only hold enough for use on the hook. The bites can be delicate, and to assist in detecting them, Evelda supplied us with these sensitive quiver tips, which are taped to the rod end. Day 5 was something of a gamble. Storman Lake has produced burbot for Evelda during the ice season, but he's warned us that they rarely show during the summer months. The fish finder showed little evidence of activity and eventually we cut our losses and headed to a shallower area of the lake to try for perch. We caught a few but decided to head back to camp early so we could take a walk to the local lake. On the wooded banks we found a substantial ant's nest, while cranberries and blueberries were ripe for the picking. The vegetation was beginning to display autumn colours. For our final day we returned to Slosfos, mainly to find shelter from the wind, but it proved to be another difficult fishing day. Martin boated a couple of trout and there were also one or two Tommy Ruff caught. Ospreys were active over the river and one of the red-throated divers seemed to enjoy more success than we did. All too soon the holiday's over and it's time to head back to the airport at Umea for the first leg of our journey home.